Stuart Pearce, welcome. <laughs> Sam, he was like Bambi. He had the worst 10, 15 minutes of football you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> I really couldn't call whether United are on the up or on the down. I really can't. And he looked at me and went, you've had some crack brain ideas in your time. <laughs> this is the most ridiculous I've ever heard. I don't want anything to do with it. The following day, he came into the dressing room and said, gentlemen, our left back's a fraud. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that- Thank you for joining us for another episode of No Tippy Tappy Football, brought to you by William Hill. Hey Sam, how are you? I'm good, thank you, Natalie. And you, you've got a smile on your face after last night's Man City result. I'm happy. So we're filming this on the Wednesday okay. morning, the night after City and Arsenal both played in the yeah. Champions League, 3 all. Yeah, do you enjoy it? Oh, great. Great, really, really exciting game. Obviously, obviously disappointed they conceded that one to make it 3-3, but I mean... Away goals and stuff like that should should see them through. We I don't do away goals anymore. Is it gone? Gone, yeah. All oh, right, that it's shows gone. you how much I keep up with the rules. Then, <laughs> well, how how long has that been? Two years, three years. Been a yeah. few years wow, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> Although I wish it was yeah, still in now. <laughs> I'm going to slap myself. I've got more subs yeah. now, by the way. Than just five the one. subs, All right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Steady on, Stu. When I started playing, there were no subs. No That's subs. That's how long ago that was. <laughs> they all one came in. Well, that is the voice of our special guest today. Would you like to introduce him? Yeah, uh, look, we go back a long, long way, by the way, because uh, this uh, this uh, young man at the time came to uh, Coventry City Football Club. I only arrived um, that summer, coming back from playing in the States, uh, and I went straight in the side. And we were uh, Bobby Gould was the manager. We were looking; he was looking for a left back, and. Uh, Stuart Pearce arrived and uh, we all looked and mm. went from Wilston, non-league, and we all thought, well, I wonder how long it'll take him to get in the game or get in the, in the team. And sh- sure enough, made his debut and uh, never looked back from there. And obviously the career he carved out has just been absolutely fantastic. Like I mean, I think he, actually, he might, I don't know, he might have a better memory than me. I think he actually might have won man of the match for his debut. Oh, I think he probably did. Yeah. Do you know what? I don't think there's anyone out there that can tell us you didn't. So I'm going to say. Well, no, that's you. probably true. <laughs> no, probably well, Stuart, it's a <laughs> pleasure. It's a pleasure to see and a pleasure to have you. And obviously, we we got back a long way, and and, and uh, his career been been fantastic. Stuart Pierce, welcome. Mm, thank you very much. Yeah, it was. Uh, that was an electrician just qualified six weeks, and all of a sudden got the opportunity to go and play with the likes of Sam at Coventry. Fantastic move for me. That's an amazing story. Mm. That really is. Then to go on to have the career and to play for England and mm. to and to just do everything that you achieved. It's so incredible. So that is Sam. So the first memory of you both is playing together at Coventry. Yeah. What's yeah. your relationship been like then? How many times do your paths cross? And well, we've managed against each other. I've seen yeah. Sam was at Notts County when I was at Forest, Forest as well. That's right, so yeah. I remember yeah. you know being on the golf day. I remember sitting with you and. And chatting to you, you probably won't remember it I now, do. but I remember it quite yeah. well. You know, talking about uh, coaching Derek, Derek coaching. Pavis, your yeah. chairman Derek, at the oh, time. Gosh, Derek Pavis. <laughs> uh, That's a book in two. itself, Derek Pavis. And but there we go. Coaching courses, we yeah. you know we've been on together, so our paths have crossed a hell of a lot. But yeah, you know, it's quite a history and uh, quite a respect from me as well, because Sam's had an incredible uh, career in management, you know, and. Uh, probably doesn't get the credit that he deserves in, in being forthright and some of the ideas he embraced certainly at Bolton as well. Stuart, we hear that so much. You're going to mm. potentially not hear for a minute, Sam. We hear that <laughs> so much on mm. this podcast. People that come on with it's like with the careers like you've had that say exactly the same thing about Sam, mm. that he was an innovator and yep. that he started things. Why do you think that that's not like no talked about by like the general public? Have you seen me? Sorry for interrupting. <laughs> uh, have you seen this figure? Have you seen this frame? Does it look like a cultured, educated, slick? Does it? But we, you know but what I mean? I love inside, that. inside, it's all there. Inside, it's all there. But you know, I'm sorry for interrupting. But As I was pretending you weren't on. there on your own no, podcast. Gone, yeah, yeah. yeah it, sometimes certain individuals are just in vogue in regard to the media and stuff like that. But the bottom line is Sam was doing stuff like ice baths and cryobaric chambers and God knows what else yeah. long before anyone else was doing it, you know. And uh, he was sending his coaching staff to the States, I believe, as That's well, right, to look yeah. at other sports, all of those type of things before it was even considered. Make no mistake, by any nationality on these shores, that is for sure. Innovator, Sam. We'll keep reminding people. Well, I think I've said it in the past. Like I had, a, I was very fortunate enough 
um, with the staff that we we built that had all these ideas. They weren't all my ideas, some of them. There was these these planning methods, these planning days where where we had the war room, which I've talked about before. We all sat in there and said, um, where are we? Where do we want to go and how do we get there? So it was all about it was all about what is the next level and what is what are we going to use to enhance the ability of a player to perform better, like you mean. So that was that that was because of lack of it all comes around because of lack of finance at the club. We couldn't go out and buy the best players, but what we could do is try and treat them better than they'd been treated by the actions that we took. And uh, and that was proven to be so success, successful at Bolton particularly that the more and more top players that came, the more and more we were attractive to come and play for. And, and that's where the the uh, the success lay. Sad the club couldn't go with the, the success we'd created. The club didn't want to go with it. Um, which was a great shame at the time, but it, it was a great journey at that particular time. But we always wanted to be a uh, mystique, not like now everybody shares everything. We wanted mm -hmm. to hold back. We didn't want to go out in the world and say, this is what we do, because we don't mm -hmm. want any, everybody else to go out. And, well, everybody does it now. I mean, people talk about cryotherapy units like cryotherapy changes, like Stuart says. And we, we had it in... in 2003, first one in the country. So, you know, people go on about it now. They're just going on about ice baths again, aren't they? Like, you mean, yeah. Oh, I've tried, like, Sam. I mean, you do an ice bath. It's painful, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. But the cryotherapy chamber is not, and it's only two minutes. Oh. So but it's minus 150. It is, yeah. It is. So uh, those two minutes cold. are painful two <laughs> minutes. It's painful two minutes. <laughs> okay. You do dance up and down a bit, or I do. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I had uh, yeah, best, like I said, best time in my management career then. I love that. I love hearing those stories. Um, for yourself, Stuart, you were at West Ham. You left in 2012 under David Moyes. 2020. Oh, 2012, 2022. Yes. <laughs> Gosh, yes. Oh, yeah. Just, yeah. <laughs> Skipped back a few years Just there. Just a decade missed. <laughs> yeah. It definitely does say 22 on my yeah. notes as well. Um, and you're doing commentary. You're doing a lot of uh, punditry out there now. You were commentating yeah. on the City last night. How are you enjoying it? I love it, to be fair. I do a real spectrum of stuff now uh, and I've been fortunate I left the FA in 2013 and I'd, I've had really good media links since I've covered every major tournament for talk sport and various other media outlets so I've kept that going even when I've been in the game working full time um, and to be fair I do a lot of leadership motivational speaking going to companies and, and you know lend a message from my experiences in the game and try to dovetail you know, sit at conferences and try and pick up the information, whoever I'm working for, Vitality or a supermarket chain or a bank, whoever it may be. I really enjoy that. And a real spectrum of stuff I do now, which I really enjoy. It's amazing how many people want to know that, Stuart, yeah. outside, yeah, yeah. you know, outside the outside business and all that. And so intrigued by, you know, mm. what we've learned and what we've done in our period of time, like you mean. So, oh, um, absolutely. In, in great demand, like I mean, yeah, I listen to cool. a lot of different podcasts that are all about like motivational and hearing, mm. hearing people's yeah. stories. Yeah, so. everyone wants to get better at what they do in yes. their individual companies. You know, I spent five brilliant days with a Gurkha regiment in Brunei. I was asked to go over there and deliver free leadership speeches to to them um, at varying levels, from from sort of you know the, the seniors down to yeah. we they took us out to to view some jungle training with a Gurkha regiment which was incredible and delivered a speech there in the jungle itself you know it's just incredible when I I soak up I'm delivering and, and asked to do and, something and you're for learning them. and I'm and the one learning yeah, you right, know yeah. and if you can go into all these companies and learn and get something yeah. out of it that that opens your eyes to deliver to the next company and the next company that you work for it's fantastic and I'm I'm fortunate that People of a certain age know my footballing journey, certainly with England. So, you know, when I walk in a room, some of them have under, know the stories that you're going to talk about. But it's the relevance to them, the stories, is the key for me. 
Yeah, absolutely. I I, I love the idea that you tra- that mm. you're traveling the world. Tra- like mm. that football has brought that, and mm. people will listen to your story. And obviously, you're so well known for being so passionate, and mm. so that's so interesting. Well, you um, psycho was it? I, I wasn't going to say it, but yeah. yes. <laughs> I bet you don't want like that really now, do you? It was only ever theatre at the time. Know, you know yeah. what I mean? It got me inspired. It got the crowd inspired. Yeah, of course so, it did, yeah. Um, it put the fear of God up your winger uh, on occasion. Yeah. So you use it, to, but you never got washed away with it. I, no. You know, it's all very well. But when you go out for a meal in the evening and the group of lads start singing Psycho, Psycho, and you're out <laughs> with your wife, you know, it, it loses its shine a little bit then. <laughs> oh, um so in terms of getting back into to management or to coaching, mm. is, does that still interest you or are you, are you done? Um, I left a really good job at West Ham and I absolutely love working for, for Dave when I was there. And, and I knew at the time when I, when I left there, it was a tough ask for me, but it was the right time in my life to do so. But I've never turned around and sort of said, I'm finished with football, even though I love what I do now and I've, my diary's full up all the time. Um, if, if the right job come along, uh, I would be open-minded to it. If I could help someone, I think the older you get, and, and probably Sam will, will probably echo this as well, from wanting to drive yourself at a young age, you come to an age that I feel I have now where I want to help others and help. Yeah. You know, that's why I really enjoyed supporting Dave. I, I've managed before, and you know the trials and tribulations of that. But working underneath him to help him and help all the staff at West Ham, I really enjoyed that. So. If a role like that come up, I would be open-minded to it. We had Mark Warburton on the podcast mm. not too long ago. It was an absolutely fascinating conversation we had with him. And he talked about leaving West Ham because he had different footballing views to David Moyes, but yeah. that he loved and respected him and he didn't want to lose his yeah. friendship with him. So yeah, he, yeah. he wanted to leave due to that. Mm. Is it sim- Did you have different football views to David Moyes or what was your reason for leaving? Um my reason for leaving was was probably for quality of life, for a diversity of life. Uh, you know, I, I was getting up at 5.30 in the morning, driving to West Ham, coming home at seven at night, no days off. Dave's, Dave's a taskmaster. He, he wants you to be alongside him all the time in all meetings and everything. Um, and to be fair, he, he drives the club forward and he's change the culture at West Ham brilliantly. That's If someone said to me, what's Dave done? He's delivered a trophy, I understand that. He's delivered performances and results and league finishes that have been very credible. But the one thing he's done, he's changed the culture at that football club drastically. You know, it, it very, it's very professional now. And for me, it was the right time to leave. I always, I went in there and, and did have a mentality of, whatever my fo- football philosophy is compared to East. We've all got a slight different nuance about how we see the game or what we see. Every manager has. But I went in there with my main driver was I need to support him and make his job better on a Saturday if humanly possible and support him during the week and maybe even say one or two things to him that that would help him. He's quite negative, Dave. You know what he's like. He can Absolutely, be negative. Yeah. And sometimes you need someone positive alongside him and say, look, hey, have you seen it from this aspect? You know, and that type of thing. I loved supporting a manager, but also love supporting the staff. Every time I got in the car to go to work in the morning, I thought to myself, how can I help the kit man, the cleaning people? How can I help the players, everybody at the club? And I think it was just an age thing where you want to help others. But... I didn't leave West Ham for for a negative reason. I, I think Mark Mark, Mark Warburton um, didn't like that position because he's not the manager anymore. Yeah, there was some of that. So with Mark I as think well. there's definitely that because you know, um, and, and I found it quite a surprise that David took him on board. Like I mean, for that for that reason, because mm. I think he still wants to be a manager and desperate to be a manager, and that's that's his destiny. So I think that's one of the probably one of the reasons, irrespective of of having a different view, why would I employ somebody that has the same view as me? Mm. Yeah, it's a, it's a bonus, why, not why, a negative. Why would I do that? Yeah. You know what I mean? I want people who, who challenge what I believe in mm. to make us better. You want someone to disagree with you? And disagree with me, yeah, and always speak out. Um, and, and whether that's on the bench or whether that's in, in the meeting room or whether that's in our away days or whenever it was, so we can actually keep keep believing and keep developing on people's opinions. I learned 
Stuart, I learned more, and everybody, or oh, Sam's what a great job and all that, but the staff, uh, particularly at Bolton, I learned off everybody's staff that I've been uh, been under and, and just left a lot of the, the old staff I'm when I've taken over and put the mind to rest by saying, I'm not changing you, you'll be okay, because they all crap themselves when you go in, oh, is he going to get rid of me? If they're doing the job properly or they take on board where we want to go and how we want to do it, I'll roll with it. So, but but learning from everybody else, you, you do an awful lot of that. And that's what makes you actually a better manager. As time goes on and on and on, you keep getting all this information that, that you draw upon time after time after time. To be fair, I still go into West Ham. I went in last Thursday. I go in, put my kit on and just find me level around the place. I'll be in in a couple of weeks' time. I host a St George's Day tea and scones, so I'll be in that just to get up Moise's nose, really, because he's being a Celt, you know. <laughs> it ir- irritates the life out of him that the whole staff can sit down for an hour not doing anything and just uh, eat scones and drink tea. The kitchen staff are brilliant. They cook, amazing. They cook their own thing and... They do that. I've done that for the last couple of years. Even when I haven't been working there, I come in and host that. And uh, mm-hmm. we'll do that in a couple of weeks. You know? <laughs> jam? Jam? Cream? Clotted cream and jam, yeah. Strawberry jam. Oh, nice. yeah. Jam and clotted Beautiful. cream. So if you're passing uh, Chad Relief any time, just pop in on, <laughs> on the 23rd St. George's yeah. Day if you would. <laughs> oh, I love a scone. Love a scone. Um, now, I have to check in with Sam every now and again, Stuart. We just need to check in, see if he's going to be on the podcast the following week. Um, I am, we, yes. Yeah. Well, I need to know what's going on with you because on Sunday you were at Man United Liverpool and the cameras panned on to <laughs> you <laughs> and Sir Jim Radcliffe and Dave Brailsford having a good old Chatting the stands and my heart went, Sam. I know. What I, were said you to, about? I said to my mate Jed Mason, who was there with uh, Sir Alex, was down watching his son win the trophy at Wembley, like being so got an invite. And obviously, I've known Dave for a long time. Well, what we were talking about before was exactly why we went to cycling mm. and see what see what Dave had to offer. Like, you I mean what they what they were doing to become to become champions, you know what I mean? So I've known him right back since those days, like, I mean, so we, we were just having a chat, like, I mean, nothing nothing more than that, really, you know, but you know what it's like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> what was it last time I was in there? I got slaughtered for yawning, didn't I, if you remember? You did. And I thought, oh, God. <laughs> they got you even got, even got told off by the missus, like, you mean, so put your hand over your mouth next time, will you? Like, so. Well, yeah, so I spoke to him, uh, it's the first time I met Sir Jim, uh, but obviously, you know, they've got a, a, a mammoth ta- task on their hands to turn Manchester United around into, you know, what everybody expects it should be. The comments on the TV and the, um, I think, was it Kelly Cates that was presenting? I forget. And then um, on social media immediately were, well, there's the man to sort their defence. How would you sort Could have sort the defence out, no problem. Well, I think I do think that it's an ignored, it won't be ignored by David Moyes. I'm sure about that, um, but everybody. I've always said this, and, and many, many times, and maybe all our subscribers that keep listening to me saying Sam's on about it again. Like I mean, but defending is is just as important as attacking, you know. And uh, and those who get the and everybody thinks getting clean sheets is a negative, but you'll see most managers at the end of, the, of however well they've played with great clean sheet. Yeah, and and it, it, defending is an art, and um, and the art of defending is, or hasn't been coached well enough, and and I'd say, for everybody that watches the Premier League, this year that's a good thing, because we we're getting more mistakes, we're getting more, more goals, uh, but most of the goals come from errors from defending, rather than being created. Um, still waiting for the stats on playing out from the back because I think more goals are conceded that way than actually created from your own goalkeeper and scored at the other end. But it does it does wind up the entertainment by the number of goals that are being scored, which is probably what everyone wants. But when you're in the position I'm in, the most important thing is to defend and attack equally as good to get where you want to go. And if you can't do that, you won't get there. So Man City have a b- bad defence they won't win the league, no matter how many goals they score. So, you know, and at the other end, 
when you go into a football club that's in desperate need, like Moyes has been into West Ham twice, you look at the situation and you just go to the players. Every, you can hear everybody say, we've got to get back to basics. And you go, right, lads, let's go on with zero. Let's come off with zero and let's see where we go from there. And it can, that, 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 that philosophy, however, however any white noise is said outside, if you want to stay in a job or you want to be successful, you can't go past that. But so, looks like some people are. And, and I get it, particularly if you're a young coach, because you'll get criticised if you talk about it or go on about it. I mean, you know, I don't think West Ham have played as well as they're playing and as creative as they are with the creative players that they've got at, at, at West Ham for, for a long time. I think they've picked up some really talented players. Stuart will mm. maybe mirror that a bit more, like you mean. There's some, some, some real quality, like you mean. But they're not quite defending as good as they used to. You know, so but look where they are. Is it seventh? Seventh Seven. and the quarterfinals. And the quarterfinals. The and then and 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 the is the old gripe from me. It's all about it's all about the journals again. And the social media follow the journals about oh Moise is this, Moise is that, Moise is Yeah, Moise is it is that, but he's building and created a really, really good side. <coughs> that West Ham uh, uh, have developed. But West Ham have, have the longest spell in the Premier League they've ever had since I, I, I got promoted in 2011. It's 2011, it's 2024 now. They've never, ever experienced, I think, a run like that. Mm. Maybe back, I don't know, maybe back to the Bobby Moore days, they might have done. Yeah. <coughs> which, is, which is a long, long time ago, but certainly Premier League years. Yeah. It's been, they've been up and down, like you mean. So... And like David Sullivan has has been the bank roller for 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 years because he's, he's he loves West Ham. Whatever you say or however difficulties you might have with him, sometime which we do with it, with any 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 discussion, he doesn't hold a grudge. But his his passion is West Ham United, like you I mean, and because uh, because he's a West Ham fan. I mean, Sam makes a great point about how well West Ham are doing seventh and in the mm -hmm. quarterfinals. Why, Stuart? I mean, we've talked about it on this show with different people. Why are people still questioning David Moyes, do you um, think? I, I think West Ham have got a little bit of hang-up about style of play and they hark back to the, the 1970s team with rose-tinted glasses of, you know, Bobby Moore and Trevor Brooking and, and they think, that, with what it says above the door, the academy of football. And there's, it, it's, it's, it's something that I don't think probably ever existed, but people think it did. Yeah. And I listen, I, I'm slightly biased. I've worked on the inside with Dave. I see the hard work he puts in. This is their third European campaign. They've got a European trophy. I, yeah. I stood on the pitch. We trained on the pitch one day and we looked up and over the hundred and however many years history West Ham have got, I think they had three trophies up on the, on the awnings. And I said, it'd be brilliant if you could put one up there. And he has, you know, so... Over the period West Ham have existed since being the Thames Iron Works back in 18-whatever, um, they've only ever won four trophies, by the way. And David has been part of that. Three European campaigns, seventh and sixth in the league. They're in the quarterfinals, as you say now. They've had a finals and a trophy lift. They've had a semi-finals. It's quite a halcyon period. And sometimes you careful what you wish for because this fella has put his life and soul into that football club, getting it to where it is. Look how white he is. <laughs> Scottish. Uh, I mean, his hair's white. I'm on about. He gets a bit of fox. colour when he has a scar. Silver fox. <laughs> he's gone pew like him. So, but I mean, it's <laughs> it's um it's one player away from, uh, and I think it's a centre forward. Oh, okay. And I think it, it's the, neither the, neither really really. And they've been searching for quite a while, and all the all the forty million pounders and. Uh, I mean, Stuart will know better than me, but it seems like from afar that all the forty million pounders or thirty-five or forty-five million pounders, it's not enough. And he's got seventy, eighty million for that one. Yeah. That one. Yeah. The trouble is, you because you Mikel Antonio is just he's just had a fantastic time at West Ham. Yeah, does a fantastic job, but it's getting. I mean, Bowen, wow, wow. signing, one of the best signings mm. ever. In the Premier League, from was it all City? Yeah, twelve million pounds. 
and goals galore, never mind assists. Yeah. I mean, just finding the niche, like, I mean, just, yeah. you know what I mean? So quality players. Yeah. Yeah, kudos this season, Pagetta. Kudos, well. yeah, Pagetta, yeah, Pagetta, yeah, yeah. yeah. They'll be do well but to be holding on to him, won't they? Yeah. Or them too. Well, Pagetta's somebody, the time, isn't he? Somebody will come. Yeah. Well, Man City was the last time, like, I mean, whether they'll come again. Yeah. But you can't, they can't, they can't, a club like West Ham in the end, like Declan Rice, can't resist the offer if it gets a, gets to be 100 million. No. I'll tell you what was nice with Deck. Um, we saw how he evolved as a footballer yeah. and as a person. He worked under Mark Noble and, and I think Mark's That's right. uh, influence as a captain rubbed off on him. But it was brilliant to see him leave West Ham and all the West Ham fans wished him well, well yeah. to go to a London rival's. Mm. But it was the right thing for Deck. Deck, um, the um, right price for David. Everything was right for yeah. both clubs, and Deck turned a lot of money down contractually over a period to say, "No, I'm fine as I am. We'll just let things take their course." And I think his family owe a lot of credit to that as well. It's nice to see that happen. You know, like you see players move, and then there's this antagonism between. Mm -hmm. the, the fans and all this game, but I think with Deck, there's a genuine respect from both lots of fans. I say it's not often a player moves up in position because he's a centre half and then he moves mm. yeah. into centre midfield. Yeah, we often hear the ex players come on talking about right. starting as strikers. No, they start there and then you move <laughs> yeah. that yeah. way, like you mean. So, which is what you happen when you're there's a, a goalkeeper in me <laughs> and you, yeah, and <laughs> 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 we keep going that way. <laughs> yeah. I don't fancy getting them gloves on. <laughs> well, we might be able to sort that in some sort of charity I'm not, game, I'm Sam. Not mad, I like enough, that. not mad enough to do that job. Um, so, do you think David will be at West Ham next season, either by his own choice or the clubs? In all honesty, I'm, I'm not sure. Um, it depends whether Dave wants the challenge of next year, whether the club think that there's a better manager out there, um, what he achieves between now and the end of the year. I think if he retains a, a European trophy... I think it's going to be very difficult to turn around and I think it will convince a lot of fans, look, you need to hang on to this fella. I'm just astounded. Have they done his contract yet? Not yet, I don't believe. Oh, but don't start that again. It should have been, that should have been David, done. David, just get him signed up. Yeah. Well, yeah, they did yeah. that with me. Just dragged it out. Yeah. 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 We, were, we I think, to be fourth in the league in December. And everybody were talking about my contract, mm. which is a massive distraction. So, yeah. yeah. And to I be fair, decide, I think I just decided I'm going to leave no matter what at yeah. the end. I just thought, well, if there's no contract negotiations and you've done as well as you've done, just for me, mm -hmm. I've done my job, I've done my four years, rang David up and said, thanks very much. I, um, I really enjoyed my time, like I mean, and we'll move on together, like I mean. So, so it, it, it's, it's, I I did my job, did my time, and then I decided uh, to move on, which is a big ask, because then too many managers would actually take that brave stance. But for me, it's the job's done. You know, uh, thank you very much. Had a great time, had great support, um, and then moved away. The sad thing is, somebody like I think it probably let, leaked out by saying we're not offering him a new contract. Um, publicly, Look at, luckily for them, I kept my powder dry and just said, uh, well, not really. I was always leaving anyway, but I could have really gone much deeper than that. But So it wasn't their choice. It was my choice that I left West Ham at that particular time and, and wished them well. Talking about managers leaving, mm. um, going back to Manchester United, do you, do you think, can... Is, is there a way out for Ten Hag? I mean, a future for Ten Hag at Manchester United? Um, it's strange. Every time you think he's at a real bottom point, they have a kick and then you think, oh, he's turned the corner. And then they go back again. Then they turn the corner again. I really couldn't call whether United are on the up or on the down. I really can't because I've had so many full storms for good and for bad. So... There's a lot of speculation. There's even been speculation about Gareth going into that job if he leaves England in the summer. It wouldn't surprise me either Do way. Do you think he will we'll leave England in the summer? I'll put you on the spot there, aren't I? Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's a, I think he's out. Do you think he'll leave if he wins it? I think if he wins it, he'll stay. Really? If he doesn't win it. If I think if he wins it, he should leave. 
Yeah, there is that as well. I, I, I really because do... I think he's done done. Yeah, right I think eventually. he enjoys if, the jobs. If, same. if he's because the speculation of the last World Cup about whether he's going to stay or whether yeah. he's not came about, that wouldn't have come about if it wasn't a thought in his mind. Yes, yeah, yeah. I mean, if you read, so what manager, better time to leave than leave at the very very top? I I, I can I can concur before, with that before it goes. Yeah. But if you love your job way. and you love what, what you're yeah. doing, it's a difficult move. Managing the inter- an right. international team is a fantastic thing to do, I think. I think he's done a brilliant job and he's been a great ambassador in the job. Um, but, it wouldn't. He's he's like Ten Hag, really. I wouldn't be surprised if he's in post or out of post after the summer. I think, I think that uh, looking at Jurgen Klopp's pointed out something that never gets talked about is is he can't keep taking himself where he takes himself mm. at yeah. Liverpool. Yeah. And and uh, as a manager, uh, my first time was it just went on and on and on and on and on. Because they had to get there from, from the bottom to the top. When it actually, not that I wanted to be, when I actually was out of work, wow, what a relief. Mm. What a relief! Like you know, in what way? To recover, to to think, to understand that you've just put yourself through so much for so many years that you are damaging your health, for one, because of the pressures of the, of the job, and and I think that uh, if you look in industry, and CEOs rarely stay more than four years. And you are a CEO. You are a, mm. the top man to make all the decisions. And you make that many decisions every day, which is what you miss about it when you first stop, like you mean. And you're under pressure so much, particularly in the Premier League. It's right to have a break if you think you can cope with it. Most people couldn't have a break because they'd be so desperate to jump out of a jump, jump back in another one, that that's what happens. So do you think Gary But, but oft, often, break? often a break. Well, it's a huge pressure. I mean, I, I wanted a lot more, don't get me wrong. I only had one. Wow. Mm. When you, when you it's consider... Different. That, it is different. A manager said to me once, if you look at a Premier League season, you the average manager probably in the Premier League, average across the board, would probably have somewhere between, you would think, 13 and 19 victories. Yeah. So that's between 13 and 19 days that you're absolutely, totally happy that you've actually, that night, you've won a game. And that turns into utter relief more than enjoyment. Enjoyment, yeah, definitely. You enjoy victories longer if you're a player. If you're a manager, you don't because you come off, the whistle goes at 90 minutes, you've won, it's euphoria, you settle down and within probably an hour, you're looking at next weekend. Week, yeah. And that's the nature of it. it. It's a tough profession and it's got tougher. Oh yeah, and it will get tougher as yeah. time goes on. Yeah, when when you think about it like that, I suddenly was thinking about Pep Guardiola and how he has done it for seven mm. years. But his support system, his support system is so good. Mm. Please excuse me, I just want to stop this episode quickly because Big Sam and I just want to say a huge thank you to you for supporting No Tippy Tappy Football, whether you are listening or watching or doing both. Sam and I absolutely love doing this podcast and we couldn't do it without you. So take a second, please, and subscribe or follow wherever you are watching or listening to us. We're also on Twitter, No Tippy Tappy Football, and we have our own YouTube channel. I know everybody says it, but it really would mean a lot to us and it means that we can keep getting bigger and better guests the more followers and the more subscribers we have and then you can go and tell all your mates that you've done big sam a favor so thank you for listening i want to ask you who you think which three teams you think are going to go down but it feels like a really hard prediction to do at the minute but if no one gets any more points mm. deductions for me the three that come up will, will be the three that go think? down well i want luton to stay up um and a lot of people do because do. the way they conduct themselves the the fan base the manager everything to go with luton it's a brilliant brilliant story i can understand that i i've looked at the fixtures of all yeah. the teams and i, I think forest have, have got the likes of everton sheffield they've got a decent run and I think yeah. they're the most you know Luton and them are, are locked on level points at the moment but I would still say that the three up are the three down I mean I mean if you had to throw on away a 3-0 lead at Bournemouth he'd be nearly there now mm. in terms of yeah. trying to keep them in the Premier League I mean that that would one that's one big criticism I'd throw at him like you mean 
three nil up at half time and lose four three, you can't do that. When you where you are where you are. Yeah. So you shut the shop. Like you mean, and obviously um obviously players have to take responsibility, but you as the you as the coach protect the position. Mm. Once you've once you've decided how many times will Luton score three away from home mm. and certainly not score three in forty five minutes. But the one thing in, in their favour, they've been in every game, haven't they? They've yeah. played Arsenal, home City. That, um, it's been the odd goal, the odd late goal as well. And the character of the team show. They're, and they're the stadium the means back. a lot, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. You know, you yeah. go to Luton's. Yeah. We've all been there. Yeah. You know, we've all walked through the terraced house or seen the terraced yeah. house to get to the turnstiles, like you mean. And, and you know, when the players go there for the first time, they're like, are we really playing in the Premier League game here? Like, I mean, I think that's an advantage yeah. for them. Yeah, without a doubt. I and think... they've got some good players, don't forget. Yeah. Ross Barkley and I've worked been with magnificent. And Ross Townsend. Yeah. I've worked with there's some there's some good experience as well as as well as some talent and, and energy and and fight, commitment. Yeah. yeah. So you think one of your old clubs, Forest, will have enough. You think they they'll battle and they'll they'll have enough to stay up. Your fingers crossed. <laughs> I hope. I hope. Yeah. Um, I think the fixtures are not bad. As I say, I've looked at their fixtures and there's enough fixtures there if they do their work properly and it goes to form. Um, they've got enough talent to ask as well, yeah. Stuart, don't you? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they have. No. I mean, they've invested I, in the playing squad. Yeah. Credit to them since they've been promoted. There's um, another one. Stop conceding goals, you'll stay up yeah. with the talent you have. Yeah. Are they lacking... To- Leadership, do you think? Because the other day you had um, Gibbs White and Yates both went off the pitch at get, uh, versus Spurs, and Williams was the captain. Le- leadership's changed in, yeah. in, in football drastically yeah. over the years. When I mean, let's go back to the start of this conversation. When I walked in a dressing room <laughs> at Coventry, like senior pros, you know what I mean? Yeah. That, that Our captain would be minute. happy to wear the armband, and you looked up to the senior pros and that type of thing. That's changed a lot, and and over the season, I sort of. I've seen Conor Gallagher lead Chelsea out and I like Conor as a player yeah, but to suggest that he is the Chelsea captain, captain at yeah. his age yeah. he's not John Terry being no, a captain John, or, or a Tony Adams they they had the stature they, they had everything he's still learning his trade and all of those type of things and I don't want to be an old dinosaur in this in respect to that statement but what I'm saying is I think that type of leader's long gone now I really do and whoever captains the team out they're a different type of leader nowadays you know and I I worked with Jordan Henderson I looked at him how he led Liverpool when they went to to take the Champions League and he <coughs> he wasn't ready to be a leader at the age of 20 21 22 but I tell you what he grew into it and I thought mm. he was a fantastic captain by the time he finished his time at Liverpool I had the same with Kevin Nolan because I had I had um but what a player to follow by the way Nobby had it he had a tough old job and had no problem taking it on whatsoever and started leading the dressing room. He was the first player I bought at West Ham mm. from Newcastle. So Nobby dropped down the league to come and work with me and come to be captain and be in the dressing room and it, and it took some sorting out West Ham. I mean, after that relegation, I mean, wow, what, what a job that was in the beginning. But Nobby in the dressing room made my... Mm. my life so much easier before that we had JJ Kocha like you mean and JJ Kocha was an unusual choice for me but it was just a different way of looking at it um, I thought Nobby a bit too young and I didn't see anybody else that could handle, handle that role so we did JJ on performance level and standard that he set himself to to show to everybody else, but when you actually give it to him, he did he did do the job. Mm. So he did he did call the players out. He did say, "Let's get on with this. this is what the manager wants. Let's get get let's go out and do it." Do you know what I mean? So so you, sometimes you don't know because everybody says you shouldn't pick a goalkeeper or you shouldn't pick your centre forward or you've got to assess the mentality, Stuart. You know I mean, mm. like I mean, you have certain individuals just knit the group together. You know, I'm I'm reading into the fact that JJ probably knitted the group. You know, yeah. you've got some foreign players in there, you've got some English boys, you've got some British boys. 
he probably knitted the group together and, and leadership as we see nowadays leadership's different nowadays it's not about beating your chest and and all that type of thing it's subtlety it's looking after each other it's, it's it comes in different guises and i think I, i'm not sure what a typical captain or leader yeah, looks like nowadays it's, it's changed agree, yeah. drastically yeah it does but everybody that you ask if you ask go into most managers in the premier league and say if I could give you a drop more leadership in your dressing room, would you take that? They would say, <laughs> bring it on, <laughs> bring it all day long. And that's what you want, leadership, accountability. Um, we, we've we done this a couple of times, Stuart. It's, we only do it if it kind of falls naturally. But it's a section that I'm calling, is it true? So it's things that we've heard about you and we thought you are just the best person to tell us. Is it true? So, away from football, we know that you like horse racing. We've yes. seen you with Sir Alex. Yes. And is it true that you're a big Warrington Wolves rugby league fan? It's true. Yeah, I've been for the probably on and off for the last 15 years. I was at Leeds Rhinos last Friday. I'll be at St. Helens on Sunday. That's a hell of a journey um, for you where you live then, isn't it's it? It's on a Friday night. Eh? My wife looks at me and says, why are we doing this again? So, <laughs> It's a five plus hours going up. So she goes with you then. Yeah, yeah. She she loves she, the sport. She, she likes it. Oh, she likes yeah, it. Yeah, she well. don't That's like the journey, thing. Sam. She no, loves sure the sport. She like the journey. But right. you know, all every game, whether it's home or away, it don't matter to us where we go. You know, whether it's home or away, if we can make it, we'll go. I've got to say, the directors look after us brilliantly. I got to know Fantastic. the coach. 15 years ago, presented on a pro licence, Tony Smith. We've become friends over the years. I've done leadership talks for Warrington, for the Rugby League, for Hull KR, for Hull. This last summer, I went into Hull and, and done a leadership chat with them. And I just love the sport. It's such a genuine sport. It's incredible. My, my son plays rugby Brilliant. league um, with mm. a local club. I live near Warrington. It's yeah. affiliated to Warrington Wolves yeah. and they are great yeah. with the if kids. If it's any good, send him to Warrington. All right, no. not okay. if you would. <laughs> I'm, I'm a Wigan Warriors fan. <laughs> yeah. Well, I would be Lee I'm Leopards. A, I'm Wigan Warriors, me. So. Yeah. Lee is my closest club. Yeah, they so did well last year, Lee. They did. Yeah. They did. My son's desperate to, to go. Yeah, we just need to make it work. What do you think football could learn from rugby league? Uh, respect for the referees. Um the unity between the fans. There's rivalry, but there's unity as well. Uh, they sell tickets for the grand final before they even know who's in the grand final. So all fans go. Um, at the end of games, all the players, irrelevant of the result, walk around the perimeter and have pictures with all the family. The South Sea Islanders pray together in the middle of the pitch as well at the end of the game. It's just an incredible... If someone gets injured, there's no feigning injuries. If someone gets injured... Both teams stop and they know straight away. And I've seen that many times, you know. So Brutal it is. It, it literally that. It, it's that brutal. But it's you have to be good with your hands. You have to be good with your feet. You have to be an athlete. You have to be brave. It, the sport has everything. Do you want to hear anything else? What I love, we your, learn from it? I love your passion for biggest, it. Biggest dad for, for rugby league. Yes. Yeah. Right. So it is true that you're a Warrington Wolves fan. Is it true? Did Brian Clough once find out that you were an electrician and told you to fix his wife's iron or you wouldn't be starting? The last bit isn't true. I wouldn't be starting. This was on the first day that I met him for contract. When I left Coventry, I walked yeah. into his office, agreed a contract with him. He said to me, are you an electrician, son? I said, yeah. He said, my Barbara's iron's broke. Can you mend it? I said, bring it in tomorrow. So he bought it in. He gave me the iron. I took it home. The element had gone. I bought it back in the next day and said, the element's gone. It will cost you more. You're better off buying a new, new iron. One. Yeah. The following day, he came into the dressing room and said, gentlemen, our left back's a fraud. <laughs> Uh, that was. <laughs> he couldn't fix the wire. Couldn't fix the wire fire. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there's your. And then from that, I, I had, that story goes down well on the oh, circuit. Brilliant. Wow. What and a then story from that, that I advertised in the program. I set up when I was at Coventry and when I was yeah. at Forest. I advertised in Nottingham Forest program as an electrician and traded in the afternoon. Stop it. Yeah. So Forest fans could watch yeah. you play at weekend, then ring you up and get you round to do a job for them yeah. during the week. Yeah. That is hard work. Shocking, that, isn't it? It's hard work, huh? Is that an electrical pun? Yeah, there? Well, it was. Oh, I've got oh, it, but yeah, it's gone over a head. Oh, yeah. that went so you over the head. Oh, oh. When you're in a trade, you get all these bright spark, you know. Oh, yeah, all come. no, Sam. Yeah. Uh, as I say, I'd... Sorry about that one. <laughs> Why John Sillett's stables when I was at John Coventry. Sillett, yeah. John, wow. John had a site stables, so he, he said, could you come and put some electric stand to it? So I run some armoured cable down there. I'd... 
Kirk Stevens put his lights up, yeah. wired Steve Sutton's house, and yeah. yeah, I just I loved doing the work. The work was really good, yeah, and you had to do it for the money as well at the time. That's because right. I took great, a cut in wages to be yeah. a professional footballer from an electrician and part timer. Yeah. I took a thirty pound wage cut. Yeah. I oh, know, that's what I said at the time. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure, Goldie? Uh, I hope they gave you a free advert. I, come, I come back from America and I just took what they offered straight away. They were yeah. negotiating with me. Yeah. I was coming back from the States and Bobby Gold said, you only come to Coventry for a year? I said, yeah. I said, uh, I'll give you this. And I went, yeah, all right. Get me signed up now. Yeah. Because otherwise I could have got back, because it was eight, I don't know, eight, ten games. You came shortly after that, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. Because we could sign any player throughout the season right yeah. up to the last Thursday in March, I think. Yeah, that was, was it. Yeah. Uh, so, it's, you know, so it was, on, it was ongoing, the transfer system then. Uh, so I got I got in like, oh, I don't know, about eight, six, eight games in. Yeah, loved it, country. Loved it. Shame. It's a shame uh, how it went. After Christmas, just we just mm, dropped off, didn't we? <laughs> dropped off. Yeah. Well, they're having a good season. I fancy them to do something against Man United, by the way. Yeah, he's, he's a manager oh, that should them. get more credibility, by the way. What about mm. Mark Robbins? I mean, I mean, an unbelievable job, unbelievable way he's got Coventry to where they are, both both in recruitment terms and buying the players that they bought to make them better to get them through the leagues, like bit like Luton situation, mm. and, uh, and and like I don't hear him. Mentioned for any job that that might be better than Coventry. Mm, I agree. You know, Coventry are probably that. really happy yeah. about that. And I think he yeah. he, he should be recognised for how brilliant a job he's done. I just love when a club has two forwards and they're both scoring. Yeah, you've got Sims and you've got um, well, Hadji they're, well, Wright. They're, they're, they're both they're scoring. Nicked him, they're nicked both. him from Everton, by the way. I think you know Everton's dilemma in terms of scoring goals, letting him go. Mm. Sims, I thought it might, they might have made a mistake there. They're going like to score. They're going to score against United. Their defence, they are. Right. Well, well, I've been watching United against Liverpool like again, and, and I thought it was a great result for them, even though they, they were in a position to win and should have won it, irrespective of what went on before. But I've never seen Liverpool miss as many chances. Yeah, in the was first a, half. It was, was a lot for them, you know, and, and it was Salah and, you know. Well, I was dead happy. I was dead <laughs> happy, Sam. I was dead happy. Um, is it true you once appeared in a music video? Yes, Ooh. for the Stranglers three years ago. Sam saw it this morning this and morning, was suitably impressed. Oh, I was, I'll tell you what. Give us a description. Uh, it was on the lines Brilliant. of the Verve, Bittersweet Sympathy Symphony, as he walks down the street. It was on those lines. It was a more of a punky tune, though. And, yeah, I had a call from the band. I know them quite well. And they said, look, would you appear in the, in the video? So I said, hey, yeah, no problem. Uh, got a bit nervous when the time come that I, I would, would be all right doing it, but absolutely love doing it, you know. And I was at a music fair in, in Wakefield a year and a half ago and some bloke says, I know you. <laughs> and I went, yeah, I'm not sure from where, mate. He said, I know you. You're the bloke in that music video, yeah. weren't you? He didn't have a clue I was. Wow, brilliant. But he just knew me from the music video. And I that you day I thought, that, you? I was delighted. <laughs> I was so happy. Fantastic. It was frightening. That's good, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, honestly. Yeah, you'll have to see it. I was more than more than impressed. I thought, wow, very nice. So, do you think that, that uh, maybe did you miss a career there? Because obviously, Vinnie Jones had a very successful acting, very very successful very acting yeah. career, and you had an still doing it, Vinnie. Yeah, yeah, still yeah. doing it. Yeah. The very famous Pizza Hut advert, of course. Yes, yeah, that was wasn't as good as the Stranglers, no. one, admittedly. The Stranglers. I think Gareth got a BAFTA for that, but you know. But. <laughs> <laughs> what was that like at the time? Like, can you and can you believe we're still talking about it? Um, at the time, it was ninety six, and Gareth had just missed the penalty. And Pizza Hut contacted me, Chrissy Waddle, and said, "Look, we want all three of you. Unless we got all three of you, we're not going to do the advert." So I rang the gate and said, "Look, I said, come, you need to do the advert." He said, "No, it's too raw. It's too raw." I said, "Gate, I said, don't worry about it. Look, it's old hat now. Me and Chrissy." Missed owls and it, you know, it'll be fine, it'll be fine. So he said, Are you sure? He, you know, would you do it? I said, Yeah, of course we would. So we done it. And right at the end, after doing it, he looked at us and said, Would you have really done it? I said, Would we F? <laughs> you know what I mean? I said, Absolutely no chance. I'd have done it straight after missing a penalty for England. And he looked at me and went, You bastard. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> but 
to be fair, I thought it was good fun doing it. I got to say, you know, seeing the gate there with a, a paper bag on his head was was just brilliant. Um, la- couple of last ones that I've got for you, in a sentence for both of you, who wins the title this season, and why? Only, only because I want to. Is Man City. Why? I've always been a lover of Pep. So. That's for me. And the, and, the, and the quality of the squad and the football they play. Okay. Last summer I said, uh, not too sure who would win it, but Manchester City won't. Oh. On the grounds that, you know, when you've reached your Everest of, the, you know, Champions League last year, mm-hmm. there's going to be a drop-off of some description. We're in mid-April at the moment. They're, what are they, third in the league? So if someone would have said that to you, you'd have said no chance of Man City being third in April. Not a chance. Mm. If I had to pick a team now, I'd say Arsenal. I think Arsenal have got a tough run in. They've got to go, I think, to United and Tottenham. Um, but I don't think they're conceding goals. And I think they've learned from last year. See? Best defence will win the league. See, yeah. But I, I think that there's the real... Um, Situation with these three is great, isn't it? Like, I mean, because the motivation, because Jurgen's leaving, is an extra motivation yep. to try and win it for him and the club before he leaves. Yeah. So there's a, there's a there's an extra. I think throughout the old football club, and particularly the players, like, mm. come on, yeah, they've got because I don't think they're quite as strong as Arsenal, and Man City, but but based on experience and knowledge and squad size. Uh, Man City only have to show the defence up a little bit more to do it. But Pep says this, um, we can only win the league if we win every game between now and the end of the season. Mm -hmm. And I think he's right. Yeah, completely. And then again, see what a Dubai trip does for you? Arsenal. I haven't lost since we went. Since he went, I mean. Since we, did you go with them? No, I didn't go with them. I was there though. (laughs) He was a travel agent. I was there. No, it's just, you know, I've, I was promoted like because I started that and start that with about giving the players a bit of relief, a bit of four or five days off, like just chilling in the sun in February, wherever it was. For it certainly worked for them. Mm. Best um, part of the job being a footballer, yeah. getting a trip yeah. away. Well, we used yeah. to go four times a year with Cluffy. Yeah, he called me in in September once and said the boys look jaded. I think we need to go away. So I said I agree with your boss. So we yeah. went. We caught the end of the summer season in in Mallorca. Yeah, unbelievable. Did you go to Magaluf? No, he had a Kalamalaw. Oh. He had a place the other side of the island. <laughs> we used to go there three times a year. <coughs> Brilliant. Amazing. Right, I've got two questions left for you. Um, I would like to ask you, I was a season ticket holder at the time, mm. about David James. Masterstroke. I put David James up front, last game of the season. Uh, Middlesbrough was seventh in the league. We were eighth. It was my first... <laughs> I was caretaker manager. On a Friday night, I sat at home and thought, what can I do to get the city of Manchester really buzzing if the game's a draw? And I thought, i come up with the idea, we'll put J-Mo up front and we'll hit everything to him and the fans will go, what the hell's going on here? And the euphoria or whatever. <laughs> so I come in the next day, I said to my assistant, Steve Wigley, I said, uh, I've got a brilliant idea. He said, what is it? I said, if we're chasing the game, it's a draw. I'm going to put J-Mo up front. And he looked at me and went, you've had some crack brain ideas in your time. This is the most ridiculous I've ever heard. I don't want anything to do with it. They were his exact words, my assistant, right? You know when Sam said, sometimes you need someone to disagree with you? He did. So, Jimmy Floyd Axelbank, if we, we had to beat them to get into a European place, you know, a draw wasn't good enough for us. Jimmy Floyd Axelbank for Middlesbrough scored 35 minutes. He hit this free kick right in the roof of the net, we're 1-0 down. We equalise. It's 1-1. I'm looking down the bench at, at Wiggs and saying, what do you think? And he turns away from me. He knows what I'm asking <laughs> that game. 75 <laughs> minutes, Sam. I've said to Les oh, Chapman, the kit man, get oh. me a David James number one shirt printed. Don't tell anyone, especially j because j will be looking at me from minute one. Get me up. Get me on, yeah. <laughs> Put know, me on there. Yeah. Like. Yeah. So, <laughs> 75 minutes, I look at Wiggs, he looks away and I'm sat there and I'm going over in my mind and the game's gone a bit stagnant. We don't look as though we can get a goal. So, I thought, sorry, I'll say to Nicky Weaver, go and get warmed up. He looks at me as though, what are you putting me on for? 
we take Claudio Reyna off. David James looks over and sees Nicky Weaver coming on. He's walking over to me as he wants to rip my head off. What are you taking me off for when we need a goal? I say, give him the outfield shirt. Say, go and play out front. I forgot to tell him how to play out front. He played as a number 10. Oh, he dropped off. He was no. like Sam. He was like Bambi. He was Gareth Southgate and Eggy Og were the two centre halves. They, yeah. they spent the last 15 minutes laughing at everything he'd done. He was scything people down. He had the worst 10, 15 minutes of football you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> but on 82 minutes, we get a penalty. Robbie Fowler's taking a penalty for us. It had nothing to do with Jamar. I was behind the goal. Yeah. Right behind the we goal. We get a penalty. I'm sat there, the smuggest man in the world. I'm looking at Steve Wigley going, hey, the new Mourinho, I said to him. <laughs> and Schwarzer saves it. No. So on the way home, I'm on, I turn the radio on on the way home. Last game of the season. We finish eighth in the league. I turn the radio, radio five on. Man City fans ringing in. Our manager's an idiot. He played Jamar up front. If we'd have won the game, they'd have said I was an absolute... That, yeah, that's them big decisions. All that, it, like, exactly that. Really it was a good laugh that. and it was a they're great one, story ones, eventually. They're ones that like everybody thinks you're mad. Yeah. Like, I mean, I've got one quite as crazy as that, like you mean, but, you know... You do Chris things Samba that change up front the dynamic. Blackburn was yeah, me. You, you do stuff, don't you? Uh, yeah, centre-half, Chris Samba. Right, get up front. We were fighting against relegation at Blackburn when I went in there. And... Uh, Rocky Santa Cruz and Benny McCarthy were struggling injury wise, and I said, "We plenty of centre half." So I said, "Chris, will you play up front?" He went, "Yeah." The problems he caused centre half mm. just just couldn't they couldn't cope with him. Six, big six foot three, like six, chis, chiselled out. Yeah. Like you mean, like, let's play off him, lads. Yeah, and all the centre halves are going. See, I wouldn't be surprised if sometime in the future, if you've got a team like Manchester City that is so good and the opposition, when they play at home, have a player sent off, so which has happened, you know. So the opposition are down to 10 men. Manchester City are chasing the game. I'd take the goalkeeper off and bring an outfield player on because chances are Manchester City keep the ball so well that they probably don't need to play with a goalkeeper because they probably wouldn't face a shot. No, in the time not, everyone's no. camped in, yeah, so much, and yeah. especially if you're down to ten men, you'd never see the ball, would you? No, that's true. They could afford to put De Bruyne in goal and just be rush goalie, <laughs> yeah, and get away not, with it. He's not, he's not that bad, though, is he? Pep? He's not. <laughs> I'm dying to see. I just it's take brave, a penalty though, one it's, day. It's brave what you do, what you have to do, and what you think about. Like you I mean, that's mm. the, the, it's, it actually making them decisions on the pitch under the pressure are really ones that you've done something sometimes and you just pray it pays off. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Last question. I'm a bit nervous to ask you because I don't know what it means. Right. It's been I shall explain. It's been sent in by our listeners. So our listeners, our subscribers, you can always send in questions for our guests. And this was this was question was sent in by both Russell and Bruce. Now I Googled it to try and find out what Russell and Bruce were talking about and I couldn't find anything. So here's the question from Russell and Bruce. With such a big week of sport ahead, the Masters, the Grand National, the Champions League, the Premier League, they want to know, have you retired from hedge diving? Right. Now, the Russell and Bruce in question, uh, Bruce Foxton used to be in the jam. I don't know if you've heard of the jam or you're yeah. too young. So, and Russell's the, the front man of from the jam now, the hybrid of. I was talking, Russell's a friend of mine, and I was talking to him once, and I said to him, I happened to mention to him, when I was a kid, he, living in Kingsbury in London, I used to be in the Kingsbury branch of the hedge divers. And he said, you used to hedge dive? I went, yeah. And he, he knew went, that, I did, did he? He used to do it himself. Oh, wow. What is it? Come on, tell us. Literally as kids, you used to play runouts oh, yes. as kids, yeah. and, and literally diving through hedges. Either you dive over, you dive through, whatever it was as a yeah. kid, we used to do that. Yeah. Yeah. And I read Peter Crouch's book, yeah. and he used he was Elian Branch hedge diver. <laughs> it's a fact. I read his book, and 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 when it, it jumped out of the page, he used to say, "When I was a kid, I used to dive through hedges." And I thought I did as well. And I think there's a whole network of us around the world that we just don't know about each other. And what but, is the point to see how many you can do, or can you get through it? Can you get over? Well, it? if you were playing runouts, let's say so. Someone sort of would cover their eyes. You'd play in a street, so in a street, and they had to sort of tag you, let's say. So to get away from them, you would dive through hedges. So you'd run through everyone's hedges or dive over the fences to get away from them. Hence the hedge diving. Yeah. 
You've done we, your hedge we, diving? Yeah, it yeah, won't call that though. Oh gosh, Just garden jumping, Rima. Yeah, it's a similar. So how far type of could thing? you get? Like, because I lived in a terraced house, Monash Green in Dudley, and it was like there'd be, there'd be ten or twelve. Mm. And then you'd, you'd get to know that you'd have to move on to a new one, up far up the road, like you mean, because you know, because once you got used to this one, you'd know where the dogs are. It's like the Grand like National of hedge so, diving. So you got to go. How, how far can you get without jumping over the fences and up to the other end before somebody not? Well, you get in my bloody garden, like you, you know what I mean? Or the dog goes woof 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 woof, and you go, oh, quick, get over that one, like you mean. <laughs> See, this is what PlayStation's so, killed all this. Yeah, so we were out Sadly. all the time. We, it was, right. it, it's called self-entertainment. We used to do knock door run. Yeah, yeah that's right. Part yeah. of it as well. Yeah. So you used to dive over the edges to get that's away then. you done, yeah. Yeah, but did you ever go with a piece of cotton? No. Tie it on the knocker and, like, and string it out like that. Go like that and pull it and snap it off. <laughs> so they would never catch uh, you that uh, way because you were around the corner out right the way. <laughs> Knockdown Ginger, it was called in London. Oh, okay. That was the name Knockdown of it. Knockdown Ginger. Knockdown, I don't know why it was called okay. that. Yeah. I was just it's only a London-centric. What did you no. call it? Knockadoron. Oh. Yeah. 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 Wow. I'm so excited that Russell and Bruce sent us that question. Unbelievable. And that you know, like, that was brilliant. Russ is so excited that there's another hedge diver hedge in diver, the world yeah. that he's met. Uh, yeah, it's exactly the he's same as what we did, branch. but just the name is, I'm not, I hadn't heard of the yeah. name, obviously. Right, if you're watching this now on YouTube, we want to know if you uh, are a branch of the Hedge Divers hedge Association. Divers Association. Yeah. We'd like to try and get some other branches. Crouchy definitely is. I've read it in his book. Right. So. so we've got three. We'd like some northern branches, perhaps. That'd be great. It would be, yes. Would. Let us know. Thank you, Stuart Pierce. Thank you My so pleasure. much. Stuart, thank you. Thank you. Cheers, Very Sam. much enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you, as always. Thank you. See you next week. See you next week. Thank Keep you. subscribing, everybody. Thank you very much. Yes, do share, do subscribe, tell your friends. The more subscribers, the better we get. So thank you so, so much. We'll be back next week for another episode of No Tippy Tappy Football brought to you by William Hill. 